Mic check, mic check. Peace, 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 Mike. <clears throat> How you doing, bro? Peace, Auntie Cornell. Can y'all hear me? Let me know if the volume good. Hold on, too. Can y'all hear me? And can y'all see the can y'all see the PowerPoint? Can y'all see the uh first slide? Can y'all see the? Can y'all see the PowerPoint? Can y'all okay. see the uh, first slide? Yeah. ETM Hotel, Senate, Monica. How you doing, sis? Can y'all see the? Can y'all see the PowerPoint? Can y'all see the uh, first slide? <laughs> you being funny, uh, uh, Carnell. Look at the. Look at the. Uh, uh the uh, my peak, my pump, my PowerPoint. <laughs> Look at my PowerPoint while you say happy Thanksgiving. I ain't this PowerPoint ain't to, you know, stop somebody from celebrating Thanksgiving. It's just to give you a, a historical background, historical backdrop of Thanksgiving. We do things and we don't even know why we do things. I said I was going all in four. It's too early for you, Sinet. <laughs> Sinet Monica. Y'all uh, share the video, too. I'm going to try to make this kind of short. Hold on one second, I'm gonna try to share. Uh, invite a few people and I'll get started in a second. Uh, seeing uh, uh, if you ain't already, can you uh, share it in the NBK uh, live uh, uh, group for me, man? I don't know if you already done it or not, but seeing if you if you can hear me, share it in the NBK uh, live group also. From I was finna do it. Let me know if you already done it. If you hadn't done it, I'll go ahead and uh do it real quick appreciate that uh uh my I'm gonna keep trying to give them to you, man. I've been doing too many though. I ain't been getting no sleep. I kind of been doing them like back to back. And I really need to get me some rest. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I think the rest of the week, I'm just gonna lay back and just read and I'm not gonna put any PowerPoints together. I'm going to get started in just a second. I'm trying to invite a few more people. Peace, uh, San Chris. 
Peace, Sister Elena. Well, I guess I'll go. Uh, Go ahead and uh, get started. Like, I'm going to try to keep the PowerPoint kind of – I got – I think I got about 20 slides on here. I I talk a lot for those that know me. They know I talk a lot. And my PowerPoints reflect, I guess, the way I'm talking. So a lot of times my PowerPoints, my slides be long and my uh, presentation be a little bit long, hour, hour and a half. I'm going to try to just make this just an hour and a half. Uh, but the name, uh, oh, before I get started, uh, uh, my name is Kofi uh, Paisa. I'm a member of the SESU Ma'ani Metanetta group. We deal with uh, the running chemic and the SESU Metanetta, which y'all know is the hieroglyphs. Um, Alifie Ibe, Mojube uh, Ibae, Igungun Kiki Igungun. And again, I just said peace to the family. Uh, I pay homage to the ancestors, praise the ancestors. And I always like to say we are nothing without our ancestors. We are our ancestors. So I always have to honor and revere the ancestors with everything that I do. And for my Kemet brothers, ETM Hotep, which means come in peace. Um, the name of my uh, PowerPoint is the real story about where well, actually thanks horror givens, uh, the real story about Thanksgiving and not the lie to school tales. So everybody that knows me know that I like to combat a lot of things that go on in what I call the food system. And if you do some research on the food system, you will see where the uh, educational curriculum comes from, and you will see why they tell lies, mistruths, and hide information. Uh, in their school curriculum. And this uh, lecture, I wasn't going to do a lecture on this, but um, I ain't too long moved back home and I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. And just I've been having some conversations with people asking me why I don't celebrate Thanksgiving and me trying to explain it to them uh, and even asking them why they do it and they can't give me an answer on why they celebrate Thanksgiving. All they saying is they want to eat you know what I'm saying? Want to get with the family or whatever. So I'm just, I just got tired of just trying to explain. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just going to uh, just do a presentation, just a small presentation on uh, uh I'm um, just on it, and I want to, and I just want y'all to walk with me because I'm gonna go back to where it actually started at, or who it actually started with, or what movement or uh, st it started with, and then how it ended up in the United States, and what these guys did when they got to the uh, United States, and why I call it Thanks Howard Givens. Okay, before I get started, I always have to give a disclaimer. Uh, I am not a teacher, but merely a student sharing information. That information provide, provided is for educational purpose only. And if you are in doubt, do the research or have it verified by someone qualified. I reserve the right to change the focus of this presentation to shut down, sell or change the terms and use at my own discretion. All trade all trademarks, design rights, copyrights, resident names, models, logos, avatars, sigmas, and marks used or cited by this website or the property of their respective owners. I reserve the right to add information as it comes available and or adapt changes improving information as it comes available in the future. Input changes, additions, deletions uh, is, a, is occurred. So that's my disclaimer. I always have to give that disclaimer um out there before um i get started because i am i'm a mere student I, i'm a mere student just sharing uh, uh sharing uh 
information, you know, and I, I accept any uh, uh, encourages uh, any additional information, um, things that uh, may uh, may be wrong if it is in the presentation. I don't mind correcting it. Uh, and so that's my disclaimer. Okay. Thanksgiving Day literally is a holiday celebrating the, the beginning of almost total extermination of an entire race of people, commonly, commonly called Indians, and the enslavement, continued oppression of genocide of the African by the European settlers, who we call the Yorupu. Thanksgiving Day is indeed a celebration of horror. For over 100 years, for over 100 of years, 100 of years, now black folks in the United States have joined with the descendants of the same Europeans murderers who enslaved them and systematically all but destroyed the Amero Indians in feasting and giving thanks to God for the opportunity to live in one of the most racist, imperialistic, and oppressive country on earth. In my schools, in, in I mean, in it oh it, i got a typo but in schools in in schools and churches black people are taught to respect thanksgiving day as a time to give thanks for all the wealth and the greatness of america to lift up the hearts and the gratitudes for the privilege of being able to exist here in this land of liberty and freedom for all we are told that the lord god himself have called this nation and to being, being and blessed from the seas to the from sea to sh uh, for for to be from sea to shining shores. Excuse the typos. I was trying to hurry up and finish it so I can do it today. But it's from sea to shining shores. But have you ever stopped and asked yourself just what was the source of America's wealth and power? We don't. A lot of us don't even ask or consider the fact that true America. Society is not founded on the basic of black and white equilibrium. Hold on, let me enlarge this too. I'm sorry. So that should be better right there. Y'all can see it a little bit better. I forgot to enlarge. Okay. The Protestant Reformation. The general historic background of thanksgiving day is rooted in the protestant reformation which begins in 1517 and it includes the thirst the thirtieth the thirtieth year the thirstiest year war uh excuse me that according to maluna douglas m nadada destroyed over one-third of the european population at that time the 30-year War was sent into motion when one group of Europeans of the Yorupu, calling themselves Protestant, threw another group of Europeans known as Catholics out of the castle, widows, and Prokees, Pahoma, in the year of 1618. Both of these are two white European groups. Both are Christians. You have the Protestant Christians and you have the Catholic Christians that are warring against each other at this time. The devastating events of this war are just a few of the many on record illustrated the bloody and glory history of the Protestant Reformation, which is replete with human torture, uh, gorture, mutilation, beheadings, hangings, and the burnings of bones and books. The fetish spirit de demonstrated in the Protestant Reformation was further taken to the heights of its gross expressions through the most hideous and enormous atrocities ever committed by one race against another. The European slave trade, the hor horrific bondage of the African by the demons like descendants of the previous pilgrims in the new world. It is a story so steeped in the magnitude of its evil and defiant occurred description. Upon settling upon the shores of North America, the ultra superstition Puritans of the New England set them to with a uh, witch hunt and a torture of the Indians while the remainders of the so-called Pilgrim Fathers to the south of the thieving democracy fell upon the indigenous inhabitants of that region. 
then America founding fathers engrossed themselves in an important of kidnapping Africans and forcing the same to be built in a country of them. We're going to find out who the Puritans are. The beginning of the Protestant Reformation, when viewed from an African historical perspective, for what it really was is seen as a struggle between the German Anglo and the Roman Latin as the two whom would hold the economic control and political power over all Europe and eventually the world. It's talking about England and Roman, the two European Christian societies, the Catholics and the Protestants, Rome and, and, and England, warring against each other. The event, uh, eventually the word. Therefore, as, an Afri as African people, we must understand that in the study of this conflict, we are observing one brand of European nationalism, striving with another brand of European nationalism. During this period of European history, the church and the states were once as a ruling power, and even today, white ecclesiastic, ecclesiastic institutions mimicked by their Negro carbon copies, while sometimes denying it, work hand in hand with the white ruling class. All right, this here is King Henry the Eighth. King Henry the Eighth. Now, King Henry the Eighth was a king of England. Before I even go to and I explain it a little bit, and we'll go into King. He was a king of England, and this individual king, this kiss king, was a Catholic at one point of time, and he is the individual that actually started. The, the the protestant christianity the um so and it was over uh the pope did not want to divorce him from his 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 previous wife so he got mad because the pope wouldn't divorce him over the previous wife so he england he split england from rome so he stopped uh participating in catholicism stopped donating money and created his own christianity called protestant and Protestant is the is, is a word uh, for uh, from protest. Okay, pro Protestants a Catholic Church mm -hmm. is a is a word from uh yeah again yeah it's it's the, it's a word from protest. Now and he started the Protestant Church and he had an individual named Miles Cloverdale who wrote the Great Bible for him, which was the Bible for the Protestant religion. Miles Cloverdale wrote his own Bible in 1535. Miles Cloverdale wrote a Bible in 1560 called the Geneva Bible. And in 1535, not 1535, but 1539, he wrote the great Bible for Henry, um, for uh, for uh, King Henry VIII. So I just wanted to give a little backdrop on King Henry VIII and then we'll go into it. So. The Protestant Reformation that those protested against the Roman papacy and proclaimed themselves to be purifiers of the European religion, commonly misnomer Christianity, began to gain recognition by the state when Henry VIII fascinated that it, will, it, it could be a vehicle to help achieve his personal aims. The primary ones being to divorce his present wife, Catherine of Argon, and married a young and boldly to fulfill this desire it became necessary for king henry the eighth to renounce the roman papacy the pope of the pope of the rome of rome and declared himself the sole protector and supreme head of the church and clergy of england this is he this he did because the pope had refused to grant him his divorce henry then set up an angelic church of england and appointed Thomas Kramer, an archbishop of uh, Canterbury, the center of England, would be a religious worship. The new e e e ecclesiastics had, in gratitude and under Henry co command, quickly annulled the marriage of Catherine, where upon Henry the Eighth married Anne uh, Boley, who bore him the notorious, uh, the notorious Queen Elizabeth. So all of this uh, Protestant. Uh, he started Protestant, Protestant Christianity, removed itself from Rome, uh, uh, from Catholicism, 
all because the Pope will not divorce him from his his wife, uh, what was her name, Catherine, and uh, so he could marry uh, a woman named Anne Boleyn. Um, this somewhat dramatic move on the part of Henry the Eighth broke the power of the dom the, dom the domination of the Rome had held over England in for centuries. So those who practice or Protestants, this who uh, I say your God would be right here, uh, King Henry the Eighth. He started uh, Protestant Christianity to further secure his new political and evangelistic footings. Henry forbade the annual paying of the tribute to the Pope, thus diverting a huge sum of money which had formerly been sent from England to Rome into a personal royal coffer. In addition, Henry disposed of all the monastery and convinced, I mean, convinced in England to confiscate their land. This rule was well received by the general population since those so-called holy communions was generally regarded as an economic waste and hoogle of cross immort immortality and debauch. After the brief reign, now this here is his, this here is King Henry the eighth uh, 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 daughter. So walk, you know, I just want y'all to just kind of, you know, just walk with me because I'm trying to take you all the way back and lead you up into uh to uh uh thanks Howard Gibbons. So I'm trying to give you where it's actually where all this stuff actually started at. So I had to start with the Protestant Reformation and start with King Henry the Eighth and then go down the line of his daughters and his sons up until we get to King James, which King James is very famous in the black community. You know, a lot of us in the black community, you go into the homes, they got a they got a King James version of the Bible in their home. And if you quote from another Bible, they're going to ask you, what Bible is this? Is it the King James version of the Bible? Like he's his, his, his Bible solidates all of it when he took pieces of the Masoretic text uh, from 1600 to 1900, when he took John Wycliffe uh, uh, pieces from his Bible in 1382, when he took pieces of, of, of uh, uh, the Miles Cloverdale Bible, the great Bible in 1539, and other books where he cooperated these other pieces and put together, which Bible only means Bibelos or Bibelah, which means a collection of books. Bible just means books. That's basically what it means. So he took other books and condensed them into what he wanted to be put into them. Mm -hmm. So now we're getting into uh, we, Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, 1550. This is King, uh, this is uh, King Henry the Eighth, uh, daughter. After a brief reign of Edward the Fourth, I mean the uh, the sixth, which was King Henry's son, who through political integrities was lethally poisoned at the age of sixteen. Mary Tudor, the daughter of Henry the uh, Eighth, and his estranged wife Catherine, succeeded her half brother to the throne of England, being a devoted Catholic. That is pro-Roman. Mary set about revising the reforms put into motion by the English Parliament and her father Henry VIII, which had politically and economically separated the England Church from Rome. As a result, over three hundred Protestant leaders, including Archbishop Tommy Cramer, which Tommy Cramer was the bishop that uh, King Henry put in place after he separated himself from Rome, from the Catholic Church, and started his own religion called Protestant and the Angelic Church. So he put Archbishop Thomas Kramer owe him so he could divorce his wife and marry Anna Bolet. So, and during the time after his daughter Mary took place, she valued Catholicism. So she started killing all, which we'll read, Thomas Kramer, who sentenced to death, thus earning from the hapless monarchy the name Bloody Mary. The designation gave rise to the English termination of the bloody, bloody this and bloody that, and the population as well known as vodka and tomato juice. This is where the tomaka, to, uh, vodka and tomato juice mixture come from Bloody Mary, from blood, from Bloody Mary, from 1553 to 1558, King Henry's, uh, King Henry's daughter, who murdered over 300 Protestant leaders, including the Archbishop Thomas Kramer, when she came to rule in England 
after her father died and then her her brother, her half brother was poisoned, then she took the throne and she favored more of capitalism than products than been Protestantism. So she started killing off. So this is where she get the name Bloody Mary from. All right, Elizabeth the first, the Virgin Queen. Uh after surviving the great persecution, which is another daughter of King Henry the uh, Eighth, after surviving the great persecution during the reign of Mary Tudor, the Protestant Revolution in England regained the monument during the reign of Elizabeth, the so-called Virgin Queen. After which, the state of Virginia, Virginia is named. This is where Virginia was named. Now, pay a clip, pay a attention with this. That's why. I'm trying to get y'all to walk with me. So this is why I'm trying to go through it before we get here. Now, Queen Elizabeth, who they call Virgin Queen, right? Virginia was named after her. Just pay attention to Virginia because Virginia going to play a part too because we're going to get into the uh, uh, Virginia. We all, we, we'll, we'll get into it. But Virginia is named was the daughter uh, of Henry VIII of Anne Boley. Now, this, she is the daughter of his second wife, Anne Boley. And Queen, uh, uh, yeah, of whom Henry had beheaded in 1536. Did all that then beheaded his wife through herself, a Catholic that a pro Rome at heart? She brought about the Elizabethan settlement, which placed the balance of power largely on the side of the Protestants. By the end of Elizabeth's reign, the majority of the English people adhered to the Protestant uh, preservation. During, excuse me, during the Elizabethan area, the beginning of the British Empire began to take root by the way of exploitation and oppressions of inhabitants of Indians and the abusive genocidal design of the uh, indigenous inhabitants of America, continent commonly known as Indians. Under the guidance of, of, of the good Queen Bess, the English came into Africa on the heels of the Portuguese, because we know during the beginning of the 1400s, we know that the Portuguese and uh, the uh, Por uh, uh, Spain and Portuguese was the, the forerunners of, uh, of, of the Atlantic slave trade. Then you had the Dutch that came in. You had uh, 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 the British, uh, the, uh, the British that come in um, afterwards. Uh, 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 excuse me, I lost my play. Okay, Portuguese and it became the most prolific slaver in modern history. In 1562, an Englishman, John Hawkins, who later was to win fame as a naval commander, hold on, a naval commander took 100 men and three ships, partly by other means capturing 300 Africans in Northwest Africa and carried them straight away to the establishment of the West, where they were literally worked to death and the tobacco, coffee, and cane field being forced to labor 20 or more hours a day for a month on end. This led the establishment of the British East Indian Company in 1600s, an accumulation of the English economic uh, wealth. The profits from the slaving made by John Hawkins were so impressive that Elizabeth I became interest in providing as a part of her investment as ships named the Jesus, which they talk about the ship, the great ship Jesus. So this is where when you hear about the great ship Jesus, this is uh, an investment by Queen Elizabeth. According to Dr. Walter Rodney, Hawkins left with the ship named Jesus to steal some more Africans and return to England with such divinities that Queen Elizabeth made him a knight. Hawkins choose as is his coats of arms a representation of, of, of the Africans in chains. Now this here is a picture of King James. Now this white Jerupu or European or Wazugu or Tamahu is the famous person in our community, in the black community. He is the famous person in the black community. You go into, like I said, you go into our homes you know, we, you look, we might not have many books in there, you know, but you, we gonna have the King James Bible in the, in there. So this guy is famous in the black community. King James, the first of England. Now King James was a king. He was the King James 
who was the individual, the Bible man, right? Who conspired to uh, compilate different books uh, from 16, uh, if I'm not mistaken, from 1608 to 1611 when the King James Version of the Bible was finished. And he commissioned a guy named Sir uh, 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 Andrews Lancelot was the individual with 30 other in, in individuals to write, uh, uh, to uh, take and extract from other different Bibles because black, po black folks all know about the King James Version of the Bible, but they don't know about all these other books and these books that he took and he compilated. But um, uh, he was a king, he was King, Jean, king James the first of England, but he also was a king of Scotland. So he was King James the first and he was King James the sixth. So if you look up King James the sixth, you will see King James the first of him is the same place. He ruled as a king in uh, England and he ruled as a king in, in, uh, in, uh, in Scotland. So look that up. The king of the Protestant establishment during the Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth during the Elizabeth, Elizabethan age was not sufficient to satisfy all Protestants for they felt that it retained too much of the Roman papal bull dogma. Listen, as a result, the development, a, a development, another group of religious radicals who came to be known as the party of the Puritans. So, so-called because their goal was to be known as a party of the Puritans. So-called because their goal, okay, to be, to purify the English church of all vestige of the Roman Catholicism. This group was further divided into essentials, three basic school thought of thoughts. Look, so it has, Protestant has been broken into other denominations. It went into the Methodist Episcopal Church, the Presbyterian Church, and the Congressional Church. So now you start to see another break off. So you had from the Catholic Christians, who Henry, who uh, uh, King Henry of England left Rome, then Catholicism started his own church because the Pope was not divorced him from his wife. So he started Protestant Christianity. And then from there, as he left, his son got poisoned. His daughter came in, Bloody Mary, Queen Mary came in. And then after Queen Mary, you had uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth, who they called the, vir uh, uh, the Queen Virgin. And and during the time of Mary, her sister, she ended up killing 300 Protestants and the archbishop that her father uh, took to be head of the church. And as Queen Elizabeth came in, she issued and pushed Protestants back into England, but it was entangled with, with, with Catholicism. So the people was didn't want... Uh, 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 I, I feel like that the, the people of uh, uh, people that practice uh, Protestant Christianity feel like that it entangled too much of the Roman papal bull dogma, too much of Catholicism intertwined. So they wanted to purify the religion. So these are the these people became radicals or the radical Protestants. They started calling themselves the Puritans, and they started they wanted to purify the uh, purify the lit religion of 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 uh, of Catholicism. And from that, they broke into different sets, the Methodists. So you got people, we know we know the Methodist denomination, the Presbyterian denomination, the congressional, uh, the congressional churches. So this is where you start to see these different denominations comes from, from white Europeans, white Europeans. So the Methodist Episcopal Church, the Presbyterian Church, the congressional church, all these European institutions, Hotel for... Uh, Sin strife M Horu. Um peace Eric Twala. Hey Nanya. Hey Nanya Mika. <laughs> What's up, uh King? What's up, Chris? What's up, Kevin? Peace, James. Peace, Queen. Deanna May. All right, I didn't want to speak, but let me get back into it. All these Europeans institutions eventually found their way to America. When James Stewart came to the throne in 1603, some 1,000 Puritan leaders of the Church of England petitioned him to an inauguration to reform their advocates. He refused, and an era of persecution broke out. To avoid this persecution, many of the Puritans went to Holland, which is in England, and later immigrated to America. 
during the reign of King James the first, who is the famous man in our black community, <laughs> any act of worship conducted in the manner of other than the uh, prescribed by the Church of England, England by the Church of England was forbidden by laws of pain of fine and, and, and imprisonment and harassment because the intensity of the persecution of one group of Europeans with a certain religion philosophy against another group of Europeans of a different persuasion, the later begins the sojourn to Holland, which led one historian to a destiny, destiny them pilgrims. Oddly enough, it was one of the Puritans leaders of the Church of England, Dr. John Reynolds, president of the Corpus Christi College, Oxford University, who suggested King James I, who authorized the translation from Hebrew to Greek, of which was later to become the King Version, King James Version of the Bible, published in the year of 1611. This version is still believed by many unenlightened people in this day and time to be the most holy and fiable word of God. Europeans empty its jails into the New World. In the English colonies, were to be were to be peopled, how could it be? Stockholders in the Virginia Virgin, which we know Virginia over here is named after who? Named after Queen Elizabeth, the Queen, the Virgin Queen. So this is where it is named by the Queen Elizabeth, Virginia over here. Virginia Virgin found the answer. Use it as a place of of punishment. Ship convicted and other English unwanted there. 1607 waves of white invaders after another attempt to make Jamestown a stable place and possible settlement. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there. Jamestown, Virginia. So Virginia is named after Queen Elizabeth, Queen or King Henry the Eighth's daughter of England, the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen. Virginia is named after her. Now, Jamestown, Virginia. Jamestown is named after who? Y'all know who Jamestown is named after? Jamestown, Virginia is named after King James. So, and for those, and we'll, we'll get into it because James, I'll we'll, we'll get into it with Jamestown, Virginia. All right. White invaded the common I mean, uh Every effort failed. The con, and hold, let me go back to Now, a lot of the, the riffraff, in the beginning, when they started shipping the Yorupu or the Wanzugu over here, they started bringing their rejects over here. They started bringing their criminals over here. They started bringing those that they did not want over here. They started bringing them over here. They started exiling them over here in what we call North America at first. This is before we even get to before we even get to the pilgrims. Even before the pilgrims, who are the who are the Puritans? The pilgrims are the Puritans. Those are the radical Protestants. The radical Protestants that uh, after Queen uh, Queen uh, uh, Mary uh, brought Catholicism back after her father separated herself from the Catholic Church, started the Protestant religion and the Angelic Church. When she came to the throne, she took Rome, she took Catholicism back. And she killed off everybody else. When her sister came on, she brought Protestant back, but it was entangled with Roman dogma. So uh, the Puritans did not like it, was entangled with that, so they wanted to purify the religion. So these, the Puritans, are the pilgrims. Every effort failed. The colonies were instead a place of discord, violence, starvation, misery. And death. White invaders who settled, white invaders who settled in Jamestown died within a few years of their arrival. And the invaders had already voted anonymously to return home to Europe, European. I mean, it's supposed to have been Europe. Excuse the typos again. I was trying to get through with this. Um, uh, so I can do it today because I said I was gonna do it today, so I was trying to keep my word and get through with it. In 1619, slavery developed a color line. Racism exists as a combination of inferiority status and degeneration thought. Virginians needed people to tend to the crops so black 
enslaved Africans were the answer. The, our ancestors were the answer. Because the lowest of the scum that came over here, the criminals that came over here, that they exiled over here, they started dying off because they didn't know nothing about North America. So they started, they started, they started dying off. They wanted to go, they wanted to return back to England. So in order for them to sustain over here and survive over here, doing uh, uh so they had to kidnap our ancestors and bring them over because we know we built it, we know our ancestors built uh build the nation for them. In 1611, the very same year. The, in 1611, the very same year, King James version of the Bible was published. Governor Dale urged King James the first of England to banish all condemned persons to Virginia. Before that, they were shipped to India. But the voyage around Cape of the Southern Africa was long and costly. King James the first charted the London Company and developed its profitable for whites ruling class in England. Now, this is the famous individual in the black community. This individual started the London Company, and I think the London Company was charted in 1605. If I'm not mistaken, you can go back and look at it because I'm, I'm just going off the top of the dome. I can't quite remember. But I think the London Company was 1605. So this famous uh, white European that's in the black community that we pick up his book every day was a homosexual. He was a murderer, you know. He 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 that he he uh he encouraged slavery, uh, slavery. He wanted he wanted to he wanted them to go into the land and develop it for ruling for white ruling classes. Look up the London Company. Look up the London Company. Pilgrims. In 1620, the leaders of the Pilgrims decided to migrate to the new world whereupon arrangements were made with some English merchants with the necessary su survey and further need to enhance the lubricated trade. They, the pilgrims, set sail from Southampton, which we know the pilgrims uh, family is who? The pilgrims are the Puritans. The, Pur the Puritans are the radical Protestants. Protestant religion or the Protestant Reformation was started with who? The King of England, of I mean the king of England, a European named Henry VIII. Because the speedway was reported to an unseaworthy, both ships returned England and docked at a port of Plymouth. On September the 6th, 1620, the Mayflower was set sail again with 41 passengers, their families and, uh, and 15 male and servants. In all, there were 102 persons. After a storm voyage of 66 days, the Mayflower would drop the anchor near Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Before disembarking, the 41 men aboard met in a cabin of the Mayflower, drew up and signed an agreement which later became known as the Mayflower Compact and the 41 signers as a so-called Pilgrim Fathers. On December 26, 1620, the Pilgrims or the Puritans, who they are, Mm -hmm. uh, went ashore. According to American traditions, the pilgrims upon disembarking the Mayflower was stepped upon a large boulder of uh, memorized, memorized in the U.S. folklore as the Plymouth Rock. The first one in the New World as indeed a severe one for the pilgrims who while dwelling here it is right here New World was indeed uh, served one as a pilgrim who, while dwelling in a crude hut, restored to the selfish and a uh, 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 sh shellfish and water for food. At this time, they built a square log house with a flat roof on which they placed six small cannons to repel. So it said, any possible attacks by the land of the red man's. Some of these Indian brothers had learned to speak a little of the English language from Euro European fishermen who had virtue into their coasts. These uh, Amero Indians were verified in hospi hospitality to the intruder settlers and taught them how to plant, uh, plant corn, uh, plant corn, and work, and how to fish. 
Little did they know that this human courtesy would in time be bitterly regretted and untold millions and the red man suffered descendants. This incident is generally held to be the beginning of the celebration of the festival holiday called Thanksgiving. Uh, family, um, I'm on a, an, uh, my laptop in a different device so I can see y'all comments on a different device. Um, and is the presentation still showing? Because on my end, it's, it's looking like a slit destroyer, but it just might be my, uh, my iPad that I'm, I'm, I'm loading on. It keep rebooting on, on my internet. Just let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Is it, uh, is it, uh, is it, uh, is, can you still see the presentation? Oh, good. I'll start back when y'all let me know. Yes, no. Okay. So it's good. All right. The Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts was the second purchase settlement in the North America. The second settlement in North America. We know the first was Jamestown, Virginia. The Plymouth Colony in Massachusetts was the second permanent settlement in North America and the first having been established in Jamestown, which we know Jamestown is named after who family? Named after the famous European in the black community, the King 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 James. And we know we can find, again, we can find that Bible anywhere in the house. So and I'm just asking my brothers and sisters with no disrespect that practice Christianity that uses the King James version of the Bible, please do your research on who King James were. I know some people just came in late I broke down some things about who King James were, what King James did. Jamestown, Virginia was named after him, which were the first 20 or the first 19 slaves came to. He was he was a murderer. He was a homosexual. Look these things up. Um, he's uh, he he uh, he uh, him and another individual took the riffraff from Europe, the criminals and exiled them in North America in Jamestown, Virginia uh, in the beginning. He created the London Company in 1605. And it was to go over there and and make a white nation for them, enslave our ancestors, because enslave the ancestors, bring them over here to create a nation for them. But just do your research on King James. Um, uh, Jamestown, Virginia, in the year of 1607. The settlement named so far James the First of England and the state in honor of Elizabeth the first referred to as the virgin queen because she never married. And that's why they call Queen Elizabeth, King Henry the eighth uh, daughter of uh, the virgin queen because she never married. And again, the virgin queen or uh, Elizabeth is, Virginia is named after Queen Elizabeth because she never married. This fact is are important to us as people because one year before the Mayflower in the month of August, 1619, 20 Africans aboarded an English ship disguised as a Dutchman. Old war was ex were exchanged in Jamestown, Virginia for food. In this year, 1624, a black man and black woman, Anthony and Isabella, gave birth to a boy. The first African slave born in the English colony. We make reference to this fact for a point I mean, for the point of clarification, because as Brother Malcolm once said, some of us think we came here on the Mayflower. Idolized images of the Pilgrim Fathers. The idolized image of the Pilgrims projected to us during our early and impressive years of grade uh, of, of grades and church schools was the was the first of a hard working, strong, truth telling, God fearing noble man. This previous portrait depicted a figure, a figure or a figure of who were big big buckles on his shoes and on his belt doomed with a stove pipe like a hat which gave appearance of a wide brim dunce cap hunt cut off at the middle vanishing a bell-shaped musket across the shoulders while his loving and enduring wife dresses in apparels that look like it came out of the nunnery walked by his side as the turkey followed and the pumpkin smiled 
All right. The pictures on this side, I, I just copied and pasted. And uh, these are the pictures are that, you know, and that's, these are some pictures, but we know that, you know, in school, you know, they indoctrinate us. They indoctrinate, uh, can y'all still hear me? Uh, this sister saying, mic check. Can y'all still hear me? Is the uh, uh, picture still clear? The sister said it was fading in and out. And okay. Picture still good too, Sinet? All right. So these are just some pictures that our kids, you know, color in school. And then they tell this, oh, this heartwarming story about the pilgrims and the Indians. Which they're telling a lot. They're not giving you uh, the historical record of how things came into place and what these pilgrims are, the Puritans or these radical Protestants uh, did. Okay. When you look back over your childhood, I am sure you can recall how ever, uh, however years around the season known as Thanksgiving, the teacher will pull from her desk the European images, these over here, these over here. These pictures over here, the teachers, yes, right. The teachers will pull, pull from her that these European images after telling the class an inspiring story which brought tears to the eyes, directed us to color them. And what color did we color them? Yes, you remember <laughs> blood a, a, a bird hair, blue eyed and pale faced. The crayons that was provided us by the school for this purpose was a pale shade label flesh color. And oh, how thrilled you were as you thought it must have been wonderful. Y'all, we thought it was wonderful when they told them stories. Then wonderful to live back in those days while vision, turkey, drumstick, stuff, and cranberry sauce went spinning through your head. Well, it might have been wonderful for you and me as well as soon discover further on in our studies. And see, that's right. We don't study. We don't investigate. We don't go further. Now, indoctrination, I put this down here for a reason. Indoctrination. What is indoctrination? Because they are indoctrinated. We have become, we have become indoctrinated. And they are, that's why I go against the school system so bad, because they are indoctrinating our babies. They get you as a child. That's why we still have, that's why we still participate in a lot of this stuff that we participate that in. That's why our kids have a certain viewpoint. They have a European viewpoint. They don't have an African centered viewpoint. They have a European uh, a viewpoint. So indoctrination, the process of teaching a person or a group to accept a set of beliefs uncritically. And that's right. We are not critical thinkers anymore. We are not critical thinkers. We just go off of what somebody else tell us. We parakeet what somebody else said. My pastor said. My teacher said. Uncle Bob said. Mama taught me this, but did you go back and verify these things that they are talking about? No, we do not. We are not critical thinkers anymore. Start using the left side of the brain. It is for critical thinking. It is for analytic, analytic thinking. It is for logic. Start using the left side of your brain. It is the process of inculcating a person with ideals. Again, it is a process of inculcating a person with ideals, attitudes, cognitive strategies, and professional methodology. Teaches a person or a group to accept a set of belief uncritically. Now, this is me. <laughs> oh, me, this is me here. I denounce political indoctrination in the classroom. People know me, know that I go against the food system at all times because they are teaching our babies lies and not telling the true story. 
Y'all see uh, the Ma'at statue in the back. But again, I denounce indoctrination in the classrooms. The mental state of the pilgrims. Now let's get into the milk, milk, mental state of the pilgrims or the Puritans who are the pro radical Protestants. 44 of the Pilgrim Fathers died in the first winter of America and Governor Bradford said of the survivors, scary filthy remains of these were only six or seven sound persons. George Thornton, a highly educated colonist thought, however, that the postacy was the real cause. He said in 1621, more do die here of diseases of the mind than of the body. At their first Thanksgiving celebration in 1621, there was only six or seven sane people left on the whole pilgrim colony. The rest were mentally deranged, in other words, putting into modern everyday language, the bulk of them were just plain crazy. They were damn crazy. Because you know when the Mayflower came over here, when we, we know the Puritans, who are the radical Protestants, I'm going to keep saying that. That's why I had to go all the way back and bring y'all up so we can know who are the pilgrims. These pilgrims are radical Protestants who are Christians, Protestant Christians, who that was started by a European uh, king of England who separated himself from Catholicism and started his own Protestant religion. And we know from Protestant Christianity came uh, 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 Methodist and other uh, 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 Presbyterian and, and other different religions. You know, these denominations that we're practicing come from white Europeans or white Yorupus or the Wanzugu or the Tamahu. And, and, and during the time when they arrived here, it was cold. And, and on the other slide where I showed you where, where it was cold, when they arrived here, they arrived, it was 102 people on the Mayflower. And 102 of the people on the Mayflower, half of them died. And they died because of the cold weather. And then they was far into this land. So they didn't know what to eat. They didn't know if this plant would kill them, this plant would kill them. They didn't know if they can go and hunt for this animal or this animal. Or they didn't know anything, so they died. <laughs> so they died. And well, let, let's get this just going further. Captain John Smith, Puritan cannibalism. Captain John Smith. Smith, excuse the uh, typos again, because like I said, I was trying to put this together real fast. 1580 to 1631 wrote, so great was our famine that the savage we slew and buried, the poor sort took him up again and ate him. And so did the divers, one's another barbed the steward with herbs, and one amongst the rest did kill his wife, powered her, and had her eaten parts of her. I wanted to throw that in because we always making a paint a picture about these Puritans or these pilgrims. And we know these pilgrims are who, who are the Puritans. They were cannibalism. They was murderers. They was homosexuals. You know what I'm saying? They were, they was also homosexual. They don't teach this in the school neither. The pilgrims as drunk as sodomites, even the early pilgrims of the new England through the various pits or were forced to appear were all the hardworking, very desirable uh, characters we have been led to believe. Governor Bradford, writing in 1642 of the severity of the punishment in his colony, said, yet all this could not suppress the breaking out of sundra notorious sins, especially drunkenness and uncleanliness. Not only the contentious between person, persons unmarried, for which many, both men and women, have been punished sharply, some married persons, but that which is even worse, sodomy. We know what sodomy is. That's anal sex. These guys was homosexuals. They don't teach you that in school neither. Nevertheless, the Mayflower ancestry is still considered the highest in the United States. Cruel mistreatment and massacre of the red people. The Spaniards consider Indian, Indians as one step above the beast. And again, we know Spain, we know Portuguese, 
was the first uh it with the Atlantic slave trade and then we had the british then we had the french then we had the dutch to come along after spain and the portuguese during the early 1400s so spain and the portuguese ushered the Atlantic slave trade first spain considered indians just one step above the beast they called them dignity sin race people with our reasons finding them an unwilling and useful laboring they massacred them they massacred them massacred them and fed them fed their flesh to dogs la casa accounts on this is one of the most horrific of the documents one man humi humanity humanity to man they even sent indians to be sold in europe the west indies and africa Col columbus took 400 native americans to europe to uh, to, uh for sale in 1492 we know columbus has a great thing to deal with the atlantic slave trade as well we we in the school system also teaches a, don't even teach the truth about christopher cologne which is his real name which we have his laws he was vital in the Atlantic slave trade going up and down the Atlantic Ocean from, from Africa, from Europe, into North America, what we call the United States. We know um, that the Indians, they tried when they came over here, the pilgrims or the Puritans or the radical Protestants, they came over here. We know that they murdered and massacred and damned and genocide the Native Americans they called the Indians, which is a misnomer, they tried to enslave them to work for them, but you they was dying. Oh, they was the, even the diseases that the Wazugu carries, they was dying off just by the diseases that the, the Wazugu was carrying. So they ended up shipping the Indians to uh, Europe, they shipped them to the West Indies. And they shipped the Indians to West Africa. The early American whites were as cruel. Connecticut whites massacred the Poquit Indians. ETM Hotel, uh, Baba Ampu Maat Ra, uh, peace, uh, Chris, uh, peace, uh, Orande Branch. I try to speak to everybody to come on feed. Uh, the heads of the parents were chopped off. Okay. And infants were torn from their mothers, breast and hat to pieces. They tore infants from the Indians, uh, the babies from the Indian mothers. The heads of the parents were chopped off and kicked about the streets. Kicked about the streets. Uh, the Bradford wrote, it was a fearful sight. And I'm giving you somebody, I'm giving you somebody that uh actually seen these things taking place governor bradford so i don't mention governor bradford, governor bradford a lot of times doing his rights governor bradford wrote it was a fearful sight to see them flying in the fire and streaming the blood quenching the same and terrifying was the stench and the stink thereof but the victory seemed a sweat sacrifice and they, the whites, gave praise thereof to the God, to their God, thereof to God. Upon finding that the Indians could not stand up under the overwhelming strength of labor forced upon him, the early trespassing settlers in America, Bishop Bartholomew La Casa, a name more vile to the Africans than Hitler, so the so-called Jews, which me and Sin June talked about that on one of our other shows, we we, we kind of went into uh, Bishop on my read and video show. So uh, y'all check that out. I think that I don't even know what the title was. That was it wasn't a PowerPoint. It was just us reading information from certain books. Um, La Casa, a name more vile than the African, uh, to the African than Hitler sought uh, to the so-called Jews recommended the king of spain and the pope of roman catholic church that the africans be kidnapped from their homeland and sent as a slave to work in the place of a par the paris red man i'll stop right there it says that recommended by the king of spain which we know uh 
King Isabella, Queen uh, Queen Isabella, uh, uh, and King Ferdinand. We know them pushing the Moors out during the 1400s. We know them solidifying the uh, Atlantic slave trade, and they started in West Africa with the forts. And the they they commissioned, you know what I'm saying, the kidnapping of slaves, the Pope. The Pope set out the Papist bull, and we talked about the Papist bull a little bit too. And just was trying to get some of our people in our community to think that the Papist bull, just a, uh, just, just a paraphrase, the Papist bull was an edict set out to enslave anybody that did not have the ideology of the European, of the one Zulu. And if they went in and enslaved black people, and we say that we are Christians, if they was practicing the same ideology as they was practicing during the Atlantic slave trade, when them coming into West Africa, don't you think we wouldn't be enslaved? Don't you think the edict that was set out by the Pope and, and, and the King of Spain wouldn't even uh, apply to us, the Papist bull? Look up the Papist bull. So all of this is synonymous with the Atlantic slave trade of enslaving black people. So look it up at the time so you, so you can see when I when, uh, um, and think that how did we actually get induced to this uh, religious ideology that we practice. The king of Spain and the pope of the Roman Catholic, Catholic Church that the Africans be kidnapped from their homeland and sent as a slave to work in a place of the parish red men. He had beasts not restored to the tactics. There probably would not have been an Indian survival left in the whole Western Hemisphere because they damn near genocide all of them. Now, family, uh, what have we learned? Thanksgiving is a time to remember all that we have. And that's the genocide that is took to get it all. This here is my sources. African People Holidays by uh, Ishango Musa Barashango, book one. The Outline of the United States Historical Development of 1492 Present by Takao Kilimanjaro, Ph.D. The General History of the Virgin of Virginia by John Smith. The article www.bbc.ul's history site themes period tutors www.whitehorsemedia.com 500 years later is the Protestant Reformation. Uh, Recom U.S. Uh, blog. Uh, so these are my, my, uh, my, uh, my sources here. So I just wanted to give a quick presentation on uh, how, uh, Thanksgiving actually started. So I wanted to go and start from King Henry the eighth and him breaking from cat from the Catholic church, breaking from Rome and starting his own Christianity called Protestant, which was followed by the great Bible that was written by Miles Cloverdale. And I wanted to go into his daughters and his sons, you know what I'm saying, giving you the thing of the, of the, of the Protestant Reformation, Catholicism, always leading up to the famous individual in the black community, this individual named King James, King James, which most of our people in the black community, we again, we we he, we we go in any other home, we have this King James version of the Bible and don't even know who King James is. Or don't I think this is the be, be all end all Bible when it's more Bibles to that and give you an historical backdrop of King James leading up into uh, the London company, leading up into him exiling the Europeans into Jamestown, Virginia, where the first 19 slaves arrived, which King James, who we follow by in his King James Bible, uh, uh, commissioned slavery, uh, the commission, the genocide of, 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 of us, the murder and the raping of the Indians, us as well, establishing this company to go into this area and make their own white nation who also was a murderer and a homosexual and, and, and giving you a backdrop of who the pilgrims was. The pilgrim was Protestants. They, they come from King Henry. King Henry started the Protestant Christianity. Two different Christianity, three, two different Christian Europeans uh, culture going against each other. The Romans or the Catholic, the Catholics and the Protestants going against each other. And and uh, after Queen Elizabeth, after Queen Elizabeth, uh, 
he started, you know, uh, uh, the, the the radicals came out because Queen Elizabeth entangled Protestant uh, uh, Christianity with uh, uh, with uh, Catholicism, and and those individuals wanted to purify that religion, so they started the the, the Puritans, and the Puritan was the one or the radical Protestants who they call the Pilgrims today was the one that come over here and set the second colony up, which was the first colony was by Jamestown, was in Jamestown, Virginia, which was named after King James, who is the individual responsible for the 1611 Bible, who could, who extracted different volumes of different Bibles from other different individuals by Sir Lance, uh, uh, Lancelot Andrews. So I just wanted to give, uh, like I said, give a, uh, Give a brief historical uh, uh, historical lesson uh, 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 on Thanksgiving and those individuals or uh, those Puritans coming in and damn near genociding the Native Americans who we call the Indians and then going back and enslaving our African ancestors from West Africa and bringing them in as they damn near genocide the Native Americans and then ship the rest of the Native, most of the Native Americans, which we still had some Native Americans here, but they ended up pushing them off when they created the edict, the uh, manifest, manifest, manifest uh, destiny, where they pushed them into these other different, uh, 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 I call them concentration camps. That's all they are. Pushed them into other different concentration camps and then ushered the other Native Americans into uh, 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 Europe, the West Indies, and in Africa, and then bring, ens enslaving our ancestors and bringing them over here to build them an all white nation. So I hope the information was uh very uh very informative. Um for those that just tuning tuning in, peace to uh uh D. What's up, D Banks? Uh peaceful shit. Um for those that logged in late to see the presentation, I had uh uh 20 slides. I showed 20 slides. I went through uh some of the stuff I talked about, I broke it down, went through the information. You can go back and look at the information. I my sources, I put my sources at the end of it. Uh, which was uh, three books that I particularly have read and a couple of articles that I read um, to create this uh, present, uh, this presentation. So hope the info, uh, information was informative. It's, this uh, presentation was not to stop uh, you from celebrating thanks Howard Gibbons, but we have to stop indulging in other people's culture. And again, I've mentioned the word indoctrination. And we are being indoctrinated. Our babies are being indoctrinated in the food system. They are telling lies and not telling the truth. So that's why I had to go and do a presentation and start all the way back up uh, in England and Rome and then following all the way up into uh, North America. But Thanksgiving has a, nothing to do with black people in North America. It is a European holiday celebrating the genocide the kidnapping of our genocide of the Native American, the stealing of the land, the raping, the murdering, and the pillaging, enslaving our ancestors, bringing them here to build them a nation so they have something to celebrate. We don't have a damn thing to celebrate. So we have to get out of their foolish traditions. But again, I know my thing is when you know better, you do better. And when I know better, so I'm going to do better. But again, we, I know, you know, and again, I, this presentation wasn't for you on Thursday, not to celebrate Thanksgiving or cook your turkey. You know, you do what you want to do, but I just want to throw this information out here. And again, for those that didn't look at the video, uh, came in late at the end of the video, uh, end of the PowerPoint, go back, look at the PowerPoint, look at the information, vent through the sources, uh, do your own research. You know what I'm saying? And, um, and on that note, I want to say ETM Hotel or Elifie Ibe, Igun Majube Iba E, Igun Gun Kiki, Igun Gun, or Dual Dual Aku. I'm out, family.